Welcome to Wyckoff Assembly of God Online or International Church. We're so glad you've joined us. You know, this is the first Sunday of the month, and uh, it's a glorious time to celebrate the birth of Jesus this whole month, and we're planning on that. And usually, you know, the first Sunday, we usually do communion. We're going to do it the second Sunday. So next Sunday, we will be doing communion, and you can plan on it for next Sunday. But right now, we're going to move into worship and allow God's presence just to come in in just an incredible way. Show us, 
fire today. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Look, come on, church. You know, when we sang the song, there's joy in the house of the Lord. So, are we all joyful today? We should all be joyful. Amen. Because we have God. We have Jesus in our hearts. You know, it says we won't be, when we are joyful, we tend to shout, right? Like in the game, right? Where we're happy and all that. So, how much more when we are in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, one more time, let's give God the best praise ever. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus, oh God. Give, give Him the best clap of Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us ring this place with praises unto Him, the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Hallelujah. Yes, oh Lord. You deserve it, oh God. You deserve our praises. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We lift you up in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Praise the King of Kings. Praise the Lord of Lords. Praise the one who died on the cross 2,000 years ago and gave us the healing that we need, the healing in our body. Praise, praise the Jehovah Rapha. Praise Jehovah Shammah, the God who is always with us. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your 
transitioned from this life to heaven. Sheila Simon is there being overwhelmed by the presence of Almighty God at his throne. Father, we lift up Sheila's family to you today. Lord, we cannot take their pain away of this loss. But Lord, we know, we rejoice because we know that she is in your presence. She is at your throne. She has bowed down and worshiped you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. She has truly been overwhelmed by your presence. So Lord, comfort that family. Some of them may not even understand the concept of, of being joyful at this time. So comfort them, I pray. And Lord, if they don't know you through this process, may they come to know you, the God of Sheila. May they know and learn and love and fall in love with you like she did. Lord, we just thank you for moving there in those lives. Lord, you are truly our living hope. And if we have lost our hope today, help us to fix our focus back on you, the living hope, the true hope, where we will find hope nowhere else but in you, Lord Jesus. Because of your love and your mercy and grace, that gives us hope that we can have a better tomorrow than we've had today because you go before us and your mercies are new every morning. So Lord, help us to recognize that you are our living hope. That when we feel hopeless, we can turn our eyes back to you and know that there is hope in you that we can trust up tomorrow with you because you are right here with us today helping us get prepared for tomorrow. So I thank you, Lord. Lord, there are some at home that need healing. There are some here that need healing. So Father, I pray that you would pour forth 
your healing virtue right now over their bodies, over their lives, Lord, that you would eradicate the things that have seemed to have gripped their bodies, that you would eradicate it now. Go to the very source and the root, and we speak death to it at its root and be eradicated out of those bodies in the name of Jesus. Let healing be manifested. Lord, strength for those that are weary and weak. Lord, thank you. We have so much to be thankful for. And we thank you that your presence is here. Amen. You are touching lives. You are changing lives, Lord God. Lord, you are preparing us for the rest of this week. And I thank you. We will have strength. You will guide us. You will direct us. Because you order our steps. And you uphold us. You preserve us. And you sustain us. For your glory. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Oh, 
I know, and I sense right now, there are some raging seas going on inside of some hearts and lives. And we say, peace be still to every one of those situations in Jesus' name. The enemy would bring about the words, what if, what if, what if. And that's concerning what the enemy would like to impose upon what the future could hold. And we speak new life and a new way into each one of these lives now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it. Hallelujah. God, if there has to be a total change of some situations, of some people, or whatever it is, God, you change those things around. The enemy would love to say that they deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You don't. Bring peace now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I thank you for it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. What a powerful Amen. time of prayer and, and worship. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. You know, Friday night we heard so many great things that God is doing in the lives of the women at the Walter Hoving Home. Right. And uh, there are two homes, so I just want to um, clarify. We had women from the Garrison, New York home here Friday night with a wonderful banquet, great food, fellowship, but most of all, the most important thing that night was that God w told us how His miracle working power is still at work right. Right. through the lives of those women and that God is just doing powerful things and, and just continue to pray for the women at the home that God would continue to help them grow stronger and and guide them and direct them in their next steps. Some will be leaving the home, some will try to stay on for longer, um, but that God would order their steps and place them in the right place that they'll be able to even flourish more in His presence and His power in their in their lives. It was just a wonderful time and we were blessed them. Amen. And they always bless us, but we were able to bless them as well. And we thank you talking about blessing we thank everyone that's been so faithful in that's your right. giving <clears throat> um i think we i'm not sure if we said we gave we made up 53 boxes wow. for the samaritan's purse they've already been sent off and and they're packaged and done with and um just to the from the helping and the funds that people are sending in the right. tithes and offerings we thank you so much for your faithfulness and we just want to pray that God would continue to bless you as you are faithful to his kingdom. Father, we just thank you for the blessings that your people are pouring out, being faithful to you. And I thank you that you're going to pour out more blessings on them as they continue to be faithful. Lord, for that one that, that feels like they have to pay everything else and then whatever's left, they give you your part. That's not really how you, you describe it in your word because we're supposed mm -hmm. to bring our the first fruits that means tithe comes off the top before any bills are paid or anything else and in some people's minds they that doesn't equate to doing it right but lord your word declares that if we bring our first fruits to you to the storehouse then you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that that we can't contain and however form that blessing comes, I pray that it would be manifested in people's lives as they prioritize tithing and offerings first and then work on bills and other things in their budget. And I just thank you. You will bless them beyond what they can even imagine. In your name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 You know, we have several things coming up soon, and that is going to be our, our Christmas service we'll have coming up soon. Our young adults are getting ready to do something next. 
And we've had so many things that we have been part of and yes. you've been part of. And, you know, we've also had a group of people working mm -hmm. around this church right. doing all sorts mm -hmm. of things. And we've been blessed to have so many volunteers just reach mm -hmm. out and do several, several That's things. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just great to see how all that mm -hmm. comes together. Yes. But at this Christmas time, it's, it's a... It's a special time, and on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. we are planning for a Christmas live service. Yes. <laughs> a lot of churches are closing down for that mm -hmm. day, I know, but I just felt God laid in my heart to, to do a live service that day. So we're doing a live service, mm -hmm. and we're planning on having our Christmas service at 9.30 that morning. Right. And for every kid that's here, we're going to be giving them a present that morning. Right. That's yeah. very unusual, yeah. but it's part of the whole picture there. Uh, giving of a present to each one of the kids. And then on uh, New Year's Day, we'll also have a service right. we're planning on. Uh, that service will be at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, But if you're online, you'll be able to catch mm -hmm. our, our portion of what we'll put together that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's exciting to have two churches, and we're excited <laughs> you're part of it. And, and I know that some of you are watching all over the place. And <coughs> thank you for your prayers, mm -hmm. and thank you also for participating yes. and sharing and <coughs> your gifts unto the Lord. It's, it's just <coughs> a big, big picture of how God has purpose mm -hmm. in His heart to do. Today we want to talk a little bit about uh, God's promise when it's silenced. Mm -hmm. When it's silenced. <laughs> so let's listen to God's Word. I want to talk to you today about God's presence in the silence. There's not, <clears throat> it's not a, quite a scripture passage that refers to the 400 years of silence that we look at from the end of, uh, between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's something we kind of have to piece together. God was finished with the work of Revelation. He was doing uh, a stage in history, and he was getting ready to do a shift at that point in time. The silent of 400 years we, we oftentimes talk about. Yes, that's a, that's a bit of prophecy in Malachi, but where does that even mention a period of prophetic silence? Yes, the people had rebelled, and God was continuing to hand them over to judgment, but he also was preparing for their rescue. Now, that's a key point in understanding who God is. God had previously spoken and had also promised a rescue, his son, Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1 and uh, verses 1 and 2 says this, and it kind of gives us the last word in this whole thought. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors, to the prophets, and many times in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also, he made the universe. This is a shift that we begin to see in, in, in a universal structure, a cosmetic structure, that God is getting ready to do something, but he's quiet before he prepares to do that. Somehow, during this time, we see some changes. The second temple seems to be far more functioning than it was at the close of the Old Testament. There are groups like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Sanhedrin that are not mentioned previously. We have what we have is what we have is known as the rise of the Second Temple Judaism. All of that came to be during this intertestamental period. In other words, in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, I know that the, there's, there's some Hebrew Bibles that talk about Chronicles as the last book, but we oftentimes look at it's, it's really Malachi as the last book there. So even, even God... Even though we don't hear from God, is my point today, God speaks to some things and he progresses and he begins to move, not all for the good at the moment, as Jesus would say later on, but he has a plan that he wants to bring about some things. You know, not all for the good, well, Jesus had to die on the cross for us. Part of that is a whole different picture there. Malachi 4, 5 says this, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you. Before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes, he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children, the hearts of the children to their parents, and or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. So he kind of leaves the people with this whole thought of destructions coming again, again. They've heard it over and over again, and they're preparing. You know, it's either they turn their hearts over to God or they don't turn their hearts over to God. But God was getting to do a dramatic shift in all of this. There's a shift coming. 
Luke, the first chapter, verse 8 says, One day Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order, <coughs> for his order was on duty that week. In other words, Zechariah was on the, the list to be the, uh, literally, the, the, the prophet, or not so much the prophet, but the priest inside of the temple at that time to do the, the duties that was done during that week. And it was a custom. They all shifted. They had a schedule they went with. And as was the custom of the priest, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. They oftentimes prayed because they, they wanted to make sure that Zechariah was going to make it out alive. Because God's judgment was very quick. And if Zechariah was in sin or if he was going off in the wrong direction, uh, sometimes the priest wouldn't make it out of there. They oftentimes tied ropes to them and other things just to pull him out. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son and you are to name him John and you will have great joy and, and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will return many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare. Remember that we talked about that in Malachi. I talked about that spirit of Elijah. The, I will send the prophet Elijah. We talked about that in Malachi 4, 5. Well, he's, he's fulfilling it here in, in Luke. And we hear it coming on. And many will turn to God and he will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. And there was a lot of uh, unrest and people turning the wrong directions. Now this shift that we're talking about here, the shift involves, uh, begins to evolve during this, this silent time. God hasn't really spoken to his people. And in fact, we now have an angel that all of a sudden speaks, and this is a first. And they make a note of it in scripture here. All of a sudden, God is beginning to speak forth. We don't even have uh, some thoughts through scripture that, that leads us, guides us through all of this. Even though they had changed the order of the temple and done some other things that way. But all of a sudden, we're, we're finding this shift. The shift begins to evolve. And just because God hasn't spoken doesn't mean God is doing nothing, by the way. Just because you haven't heard from God doesn't mean he's doing nothing. His instructions are to build our faith and prepare us. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now. My wife also is well along in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. Now, he's just like in total disbelief that this is God. Total disbelief. Well, I, I kind of understand a little bit of that because it's been 400 years since anybody really has heard from God. But it goes on to say, but now since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. Now, you have to remember, an angel to just be in that, that holy of holy area and burning incense at that point in time was unbelievable because God would have, would have killed off anybody who literally went in there not at the right time and not at the right place. God would have taken care of that. So there's an angel there. He's not believing him. He's not believing this good news. He's not understanding. But now since you didn't believe, you'll be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. You know, the this, this silence is God's... <laughs> God's been silent. Now he's making Zechariah silent at this moment. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. I mean, they're a little concerned about it at this point in time. Then they realized from his gestures, that's all he could do is gesture out. And his silence, that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. He must have seen a vision of God is what they're, they're understanding. So they kind of moved on from that. And when Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Zechariah didn't believe uh, what he heard from God, and he had a whole struggle with that. And a lack of faith literally cost him 
his ability to speak and talk about this great miracle that was getting ready to take place. Children of Israel were told to walk around the walls for six days without uttering a sound. Remember that? That's part of God's preparation, this evolving, that God literally takes this silent thing. Over and over again, we find God doing the silent. Remember on the, on the seventh day, they marched around six more times without saying a word? Sometimes we as Christians get the idea that we just want to start shouting in the beginning when we hear a miracle's coming. Maybe that's our time to begin to just pray. Maybe that's our time to just wait on God some more. Maybe that's our time to say, God, I, I feel a shift coming. I feel something begin to change inside of my spirit. And God, in the midst of that shift that's coming, I just want to wait on you because, God, I want to get this right. I want to know, God, that you're really doing this. And the shift is getting stronger. In verse 24, it says this, Soon afterward, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. She didn't even see anybody whatsoever. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. Because at that point in time, you were looked upon. If you didn't have children, you're looked upon as this lower class of people. And uh, well, you're not really part of us. There are rewards when God begins to shift things around. There are glimmers of things that begin to put in place. Now, removing her disgrace was not the biggest part of that shift. The birth of John, obviously, was the biggest part. But there are side effects and, and extras that God begins to do as he begins to shift things, getting ready for his miracle. He begins to just move things around a little bit there. But God is still preparing us, and God is still preparing them, and God's putting this whole thing together. Elizabeth went in seclusion. She went in seclusion, I believe, because she didn't need to talk to anybody else at that point in time. Everybody would have talked about it and done all sorts of things and, and rumors would have fled, but she did one of the most proper things to do at that point in time. She went into seclusion. Sometimes when God begins to birth something inside of us and we see God beginning to do the shift and he's beginning to begin to change some things around, don't just be yakking about it all over the place and, and because the more you yak, some other people will begin to talk about all sorts of things and, and maybe yak's not the right word to use, but people will begin to talk about all sorts of things. They may talk you out of your miracle. They may focus you a whole different direction. She needed to stay focused on what God was doing inside of her. And preparing during that shift, she was preparing for the birth but also preparing for a king because her son would prepare for the coming of the Lord. Our preparation is often in prayer. That's our preparation. That's where God oftentimes works inside of us. If Elizabeth had begun to share it in public, she might have lost that whole thing. Confirmation, confirmation we find next. And the final thing here, confirmation of a cosmic universal shift is coming. Oh, I just, I, Lord, give me that title. Confirmation of a cosmic universal shift that is coming. You know, another angel breaks the silence. And in Luke, the first chapter, verse 26, it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed. She's confused and disturbed. Oh, wait a minute. How, how, how can this be me? How can this be happening to me? And Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary. The angel told her, for you have found favor with God. The difference between confused and disturbed and lack of faith is, is you can be confused and disturbed by what God is beginning to say to you. There's been times people have prophesied over me. Prophecy doesn't mean it's, it's the end piece to the whole thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a point and part of the shifting taking place. Part of the shifting taking place. It's like a little earthquake, a little tremor coming on. And, and it's just a little shifting going on there. And sometimes we get a little confused by that. It may, might get a little disturbed about that. And you're saying, but you know, God, you put this inside of me. This is going to begin to happen. There's been some things that God has placed inside of Pastor Becky and myself. And we have stood on it over and over again and said, God, we know you're getting ready to do this. And we stand firm on your word. Oftentimes during those times, people will try to pull me another direction. I've seen this happen so many times. Verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus and he will be very great and he will be called the son of the most high God. The Lord will give him 
the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby will be born, born will be holy and you will be called, he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. You know, uh, God's using what's going on in Elizabeth's life to encourage Mary at this point in time because she's a little confused and a little disturbed about what all is going on according to scripture here. And people uh, used to say that she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month for the word of God will never fail. You say that with me? The word of God will never fail. Say it again. The word of God will never fail. Hallelujah. The shift breaks the silence, but God always has a plan. God always has a plan. Shift may break the silence, and it may begin to, we begin to hear from God, but it's not the whole picture yet. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. You notice that Mary's not so taken back as Zachariah was. He, she accepts it a whole lot better. Mary looking for some confirmation, some form from God, Holy Spirit, confirms this great shift coming. And oftentimes the Holy Spirit will confirm things in your life as it begins to speak to you. A few, a few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. You talk about a shift. You talk about a shift. You talk about a movement. You talk about something beginning to happen. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You know, there are times that you go through stuff. Some of you are saying, you know, I've, I've gone through some really dry stuff and I don't even know if God has really heard me or I don't even know if God is listening to me. And I haven't heard God for a while. Maybe you've been in his word and I hope you are because that's where you start with. In his word, but you're not really connecting and you really don't feel like God is confirming some things inside of you. You may feel like you're going through some things. You gotta realize several of these things took place over several months. It wasn't just day, 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 day. It was over several months. Let me tell you, there's a verse of scripture that God has always given me. When I felt like I wasn't hearing from God, that God wasn't talking to me. And it's in Isaiah, the 35th chapter, verses one and two. It says, the wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The desert's gonna bloom like a rose. There's some things that God's got for you. You've been hanging on there and you, you feel like, you. how can I go any farther and how can I make it any farther? And God says, I've got a plan for your life. And there's a shift that's coming. There's a shift that's it's gonna break that silence. It's gonna, there's a shift that's gonna begin to take place in your life. And as that shift begins to take place in your life, God is bringing about some great things inside of you and he's getting ready to do it now. Hallelujah. You, if you say, well, right this minute, well, it could happen today, it could happen tomorrow, it could happen a little longer. But I need to begin to really prepare my heart, my life, get on my knees, talk to God every day, make sure that I'm ready to handle that shift. I'm not sure that Zachariah was totally ready to handle that shift. He wasn't expecting anything except for the, the ritual that he was going through at the time. You've gone through some rituals for a while. And yet you've gone through them and you said, well, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Going, even reading the word of God has become a ritual, Pastor. Well, you begin to shift that a little bit. And say, God, I'm gonna dig in a little deeper. I just want some more of you because God, I know your promises are yes and amen and I'm trusting you to take me through. Can I pray for you today? 
Lord Jesus, I ask you to minister to my friends today. Lord Jesus, as they have reached out and said, God, you know, I'm not moving, nothing's happening, and I feel like the desert is inside of me, and I can't even, can't even move forward. I can't even hear from you, God. Lord, I ask you to begin to break that silence inside of them with your presence. Your presence is always there. But Lord, begin to break that silence that seems so deafening at times. Lord, begin to break that silence that seems so overwhelming. Let a shift begin to take place in their lives. Now in Jesus' name I pray. Lord, to that one that may not even know you, doesn't even have a relationship with you, Lord Jesus, I ask you, Lord, as they begin to cry out to you and say, God, come into my heart and life. Forgive me of all my sins. Then, Lord, you will come in and begin to renew the inside of them right now and change their life completely. Birth inside of them something greater than what they expected. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, my friend. Hallelujah. God has a plan for your life. Amen. Till we meet again. God bless you.